Okay, Marlene. I hope all of you know of Marlene Sanders. She was our founding chair of Women's Z News. And she's, a, and she's also an Emmy Award documentary producer. She had an incredible career in broadcast. She brings with us to us tonight her documentary, The Hand That Rocks the Ballot Box, and was about women in politics in 1970. Marlene? Well, it's great to be here, and to, to actually be here on the 26th, which is the uh, anniversary of the passage of the uh, 19th Amendment. Um, it's also a great opportunity for me to show one of my favorite films. Uh, I was looking through my folders the other night to see how many documentaries I actually made, and I made 24 over a long career in television. Um, about nine were on the women's movement, uh, on all aspects of it. Uh, now, I, I want to give you a little background um, on how during that period I came to be doing all this. Um, during the early years in broadcasting, it turns out that I was one of the first network women correspondents. There were five in 1964 when I joined ABC News. And um, so, you know, that was practically nothing. Um, how I happened to get that job, well, that's a long story. But after nine years in local television news, radio, and um, other jobs connected with broadcasting, I became, I, hi, I was hired by ABC as a correspondent. And for a reporter, this was great timing, since there was nothing but chaos, trouble, all sorts, the world was falling apart in the 60s, and reporters loved that. Um, <laughs> demonstrations, war, uh, liberation movements. Uh, I covered the Vietnam War in 1966. The anti-war movement the demonstrations in the street and on the campuses, and after the election of Lyndon Johnson, his great society programs. Um, and I reported on all of those, food stamps, the Job Corps, and a favorite of Lady Bird Johnson's, Head Start. Now, Lady Bird held a reception to celebrate the beginning of that program at the White House. And this was 1965, and I found myself in a receiving line, which was moving slowly. And I, I was standing next to Betty Friedan, whom I had never met before. Uh, her book had come out two years earlier, in 1963, and was beginning, that was the feminine mystique, of course, and that was beginning to change women's lives. But this was 65, and so we started a chat. And then the, we continued the conversation at the shuttle going back to New York. And uh, we formed a long friendship, which lasted her entire life. I got to know many of the women um, that she was involved in, um, in in forming the National Organization for Women, which she told me about at that time. She said, well, I think we need an NAC, NAACP for women. And I, I said, you know, fine, great. Um, and, and all of these women that were active at the time became known, and as I was part of, the second wave of feminists. The, the suffragists who, who, who struggled, as uh, Rita was describing, to get the amendment passed, they were the first. Uh, allegedly, there's a third wave now, but I have been unable to find it. <laughs> I think it's out there somewhere. And I know people will yell at me and say, why well, you don't know about this, Beth? but it's, it's very low profile. So uh, well, she forms the National Organization for Women, and a lot of women who initially were interested found it too conventional too traditional, and they formed their own groups, uh, the New York Radical Feminists, um, Red Stockings, and other <coughs> groups that went in for um, mm, ac actions of different types. Well, by then, of course, I knew everybody, and so everybody would tip me off in advance about what was happening. For example, the women put up a banner somehow on the Statue of Liberty. How they got it up there. It said, if I recall correctly, women of the world unite. <laughs> of course, I was there with the film 